Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Test Analyst. We are in chapter 1 and we are done with all the tutorials of chapter 1. We are moving to the next session which is the sample questions on the chapter 1. You can expect 9 questions from this chapter which will be uh, distributed uh, differently uh, in different questions like sometime you can be asked with uh, just a straightforward question what you're looking at right now or probably in the next way they, you can be asked with a scenario based question which is uh, defined in a big scenario you need to go through the scenario and understand and then typically pick one or two options from that so in this uh, advanced level examination you may be asked for picking up multiple choices as well multiple options from the given options and then of course the rating for those questions will also be high maybe two points and three points if it is straightforward one point so the point system will be mentioned in the examination so that you can judge yourself that how many points you're gonna get to answer this question so in simple way uh, the linear questions will have more marks the straightforward questions will have less marks so let's quickly get started with the sample questions from here let's see how well we can handle because there will be lengthy questions coming up later so let's target the understanding so question number one, which of the following statements is true with respect to when the test analyst should become involved during the different life cycle models? So if you look at the options here in sequential V-model projects, the test analyst should start test analysis concurrently with coding. I think that's quite late. You know, it should be uh, the test analysis is analyzing the requirements and that should not wait for coding to begin. So it's going to be late. Uh, let's look at B in sequential V model projects. The test analyst should start the test analysis concurrently with the requirement specification. I think that should be the most relevant option as of now because as you get the requirement specification done, the test analysis can begin to identify any kind of uh, you know omissions, inconsistent inconsistencies, or any kind of issues, and review can also happen parallelly. C, there are no differences in the moment of involvement for the test analysis for the various software lifecycle. Now, of course, it is different that we know from foundation itself. In agile projects, the test analyst should start test analysis and design concurrently with coding. I think analysis and design are two different phases of software testing lifecycle. Thus, they cannot be combined together and should happen only one after the other. So, so far, we got the right answer is B. And that's the most relevant option for this question. Question number two, which of the following is a type of testing that someone in the role of test analyst working with the test manager should typically consider and plan for? So I think this is quite simple and easy questions to pick the right answer quickly without wasting your time. We have performance, maintainability, usability, security, and we know that performance is completely a technical test analyst role, maintainability, is again a technical test analyst security is also a technical test analyst but usability just because it can be handled right from the functional level uh, we can give it to the test analyst here so the right answer is usability and we will be understanding more in detail about these things as we come up with the next chapters so uh, keep this in mind question number three which of the following statement does not give a good reason why test cases should be reviewed and understood by other stakeholders. Now if you see there's a highlight here, the word not. That means you need to look for a negative statement rather than positive. That will be your answer. So look at statement A. Customer and users review the test cases in order to verify them against requirements, business process and business rules. I think yes, customer and users are the one who knows the requirement about and they can review the test cases to make sure that you have understood the requirements correctly or not or you are getting deviated. So I think A is a valid statement. B, the test manager reviews the test cases. Of course, test manager reviews. But in order to control the work of test analyst and to create the organization's test strategy, I think test strategy is something which is created long before that. And uh, when it comes to the control the work of test analyst, and that, that's not the way how you basically uh, decide the work for schedule or work load of a test analyst by reviewing the test cases. I think that's much later in the cycle. It should be done well before, but this is not the right way. So I think this is the uh, negative statement as of now. 
Look at C test to review test cases written by other testers in order to ensure that the test cases are consistent, understandable, and executable by testers other than the author. So I think this is also relevant. This is what we do basically in practical world. D developers review the test cases written by testers in order to align their understanding of requirements with those of testers and to align component testing with the system testing. I think that's also relevant because yes, that could be a good practice when you talk about agile and we do follow such principles. So the finally, the right answer is B, which is not a good reason why test cases should be reviewed and understood by the stakeholders. Question number four, uh, this is a scenario based question and of course you will be uh, given two points for this question because you take a lot of patience to read, understand and then give the right answer. A project has been initiated to collect and analyze users of the web based search tool in order to optimize search results for a particular group of users. The project will build on the initial analysis of user data collected over a period of time and will aim to refine the collection and analysis engines so that relevant data can be collected and analyzed in real time. Enabling users to focus their search more effectively, the project will use agile techniques in an iterative or incremental life cycle. The requirements are based on user stories and these will be explored during the short sprints. The sprints will be grouped to focus on data collection for the first part of the project and analysis for the second part. Risk includes the inability to analyze the volume of data collected, inability to collect the data for the desired analysis, inadequate speed of response times, and poor user interface. So if you see uh, the key highlights while you're reading the question itself should be done by you. This is more important. First, they just wanted to tell you that it is all agile methodology. The second starts from the third last statement. The risk is being identified by the test analyst, which includes the volume of the data collected, inability to collect the data from the desired analysis, inadequate speed and response time, which is from the performance, and poor user interface, which is related to usability. The testing for the first part has been scoped and requirements have been documented and reviewed with no major concerns arising. Now, which of the following answers describe the most appropriate and complete sequence of activities for the test analyst to focus on during the test analysis and design. So requirement phase has been done and we are going to move with test analysis and design. Let's look into what options we have got. Analyze user stories, select test cases, design techniques, create high level test conditions for the risk mitigation, create test cases to achieve desired coverage for user stories and create risk mitigation test cases. Now, I don't think that that really fits into the process when it comes to analysis and design because of mitigation, but I'll come back to this point. Let's look at the other options first. Analyze risk, create test conditions to address the risk, create high level test cases to meet the test conditions for the risk mitigation and user stories, create all low level test cases. C, select test case design techniques, create high level test cases to meet the test condition, create high level test cases to mitigate the risk, create low-level test cases to achieve the desired coverage. And D, analyze user stories, identify test conditions at appropriate levels to address the user stories, add test conditions for the risk mitigation, select test cases, design techniques to achieve desired coverage and create test cases. Now, if you compare all these four options, you would realize that if you see option C, it says that we are not talking about analysis anywhere. We are only talking about test design. So if you see test design technique, test cases creation, high level, low level, it's only talking about test design. So C can be ruled out. When you took at B, analyze risk, create test, create conditions or whatever it is, but analyze risk, which is already done. You know, we have already done with the risk analysis part and we have already identified certain risk and we are not talking about analyzing the risk. We are talking about analyzing the requirements. So B can also be ruled out. But when it comes now to A and D, if you look at A, analyze user stories, select test case design techniques. Now how can you directly go to test case design techniques without understanding about the mitigation, that how your what your risks are, what your mitigation plan is, 
and then you can uh, you know effectively choose from the black box white box or experience based approach which will be more relevant at what point of time so it can directly cannot move to the disk design techniques without having a mitigation plan so that's where the most relevant option we have got here is d which could be giving you the right answer so this is how you need to decide on what could be the best way to pick up the right option sometime you need to patiently read all the options and then uh, figure out what could be the thing which is not happening but if you barely look at the options directly then you may think that all the four options are right and that's where people say that uh, CQB examinations are very confusing and this is what it is but if you read it patiently you understand what instance has taken place already what you are targeted on and what the options are covering what do you need to target before and what do you need to target later so all those things will help you to pick up the right answer so that's all from this tutorial team thanks for watching the video uh, in case you have any queries beyond this feel free to comment below you can also post your queries uh, with the questions you can paste your questions in the comment box i'll be able to answer those things so thanks for watching this video team keep learning keep exploring keep understanding the content and Thanks for watching the video. Happy learning.